We spoke previously about the great miracle of Al-Isra wal Ma'raj, the night journey and ascension. Ascension where? To heaven, to the seven heavens and what is above that. Allah Ta'ala enabled the Prophet Muhammad to, to enter Jannah and he saw in Al-Jannah that the inhabitants would be, most of its inhabitants or the people of Al-Jannah in this world they were poor. They, they were poor Muslim. And the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, learned many things from Al Isra al Ma'raj. And, and he received the orders of the five prayers. And, and there's other thin, things of uh, you know, matters of great wisdom he also conveyed to us from Al Isra al Ma'raj. And we know through this miracle the high status. And when I say high status or darajat of Rasulullah, it means he was given the, the highest status. He is Khairul Bariya or Khairul Baraya, meaning the, the best, Afdalu Khalqillah, the best of the creation. Why is he the best of the creation? Because his benefit to humanity is the best. The one who believes in him, in him will be saved eternally. He, he will be saved from the everlasting hellfire and he will be admitted, or she, he, and he or she will be admitted into the everlasting heaven, you know, paradise, al-jannah, al-jannah. Uh, and there's no benefit in this world that compares to being in a place of peace and serenity, of pleasure and happiness forever. The, the, there's nothing that compares to that in this world. So the one, the one who is guiding you to that, his benefit is the greatest, and thus Allah Ta'ala gave him the highest status sallallahu alayhi wasallam so we learn from al isra al ma'raj orders from allah we learn the high status of rasulullah and we learn about having faith in the miracles which at times we don't understand how things could happen like that but we know we know and we believe in the truthfulness of these prophets and in the greatness and in the power of allah ta'ala and th th this makes our faith strong. This makes our faith strong. Now, th there's a misconception that some people th they have regarding this great miracle, Al Isra al Ma'raj. And I, I want to point out the misconception, and I want to point out how you you could explain to these people um, th th that they're they're totally off. They, they didn't understand the proper message. Number one, they, some people think that the ascension to heaven, they, they, they think that Allah is in the sky and they think that uh, Prophet Muhammad was honored to go up and meet him. This is a total, total misconception. And be warned, this is not the Muslim belief. Number one, one cannot say Allah is in the sky because Allah created the sky. Allah does not need what, what, what He created. And, and by one saying that Allah is in the sky, uh, he, or, or above the sky, he would be given Allah uh, a location and a place. And when one gives Allah a place or a location, he may not realize it, or she may not realize, but they're also given Allah a body. Because if you're in a place, in any direction, you gotta have a shape, a form. How? I don't know how that shape could be. It could be, um, it could be a, rectangle, a rectangular shape, it could be a, a sphere, it could be... A, there are many, many different shapes. But, but the, the person cannot hide, he cannot escape from that fact. If you attribute place to a thing, you're, you're also attributing a body. And that, that's why we say it's not permissible to attribute a place to Allah. Now, the question may arise, 
and some people if they read the Quran or, and they read the hadith without any guidance of the ulama, of the great scholars of Islam, of the great imams of Islam, they will in, in many cases be, have a misconception that Allah is located in the sky and may Allah protect us from such disbelief because Allah is the creator of the sky and what's beyond the sky and every single thing and, Allah, and we cannot attribute, we cannot associate Allah with His, crea with his creation. The, the sky is a creation of Allah. And Allah existed before such thing as time or place. Now the, the, the people who think that Allah is in the sky, they tell you that yes, Prophet Muhammad went up and he heard the kalam of Allah, the eternal and everlasting kalam of Allah in the sky. So they, they, they tell you, this must mean that Allah is in the sky. So we tell them, look, Prophet, Muhammad, Prophet Musa السلام, went to a mountain and he heard the kalam of Allah. Now does this mean Allah was on a mountain? They would say no. They would say no. And we would tell them, well, to say that Allah is in the sky, just because of the fact that, that Prophet Muhammad was enabled to hear the, 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 the kalam, the communication of Allah, it does not mean that it does not mean that Allah is in or up there, as they say. And in English, you have some sayings where they say, you know, the man upstairs about God, about Allah, and this is total blasphemy. They, they, the one who says that or believes that has no conception, uh, like no true and no true understanding of Allah, of the Creator. The Creator is unequal, is not similar, is unique without a similar. And this is who we're, we're ordered to worship. We're not ordered to worship idols that we, we fashion, that we mold with our hands. And we're not ordered to worship idols that we fashion or mold in our imagination. And some people, and many people say they believe in God or Allah, and in their mind they imagine a light, they imagine a spirit, they imagine a huge figure, you know, that's up there in the skies. That's totally against Islam. Be firm on that. Use keep your, put, put a value to your intelligence and, and be strong on that, that Allah is un, not similar to the creation. And, and so the, the, the one who reads Qur'an and Hadith without the guidance of the scholars, he is in a very, or she is in a very dangerous situation. And we see some books today in the market, a lot of books, not some. We see books in the market, we see TV programs of people who appear to be very pious Muslims from, from the external, from the outside. And they, they quote ayahs which are true. They quote hadiths which are true. But these ayahs, and had, but they misinterpret their meanings. So be warned about, about that. Um, there are ayahs, if, if you read their literal meaning, you might think that Allah is, is so close to you that He's close to your jugular. Vain. It does not mean that. It means Allah knows about you more than you know about yourself. There are some ayahs that you might read. If you don't have the guidance of the, of, of the scholars, you might one might think that Allah is um, is in the sky. In other ayahs, one might think that Allah is above the sky, uh, on the you know sitting on the arsh billah. This is totally against Islam. In other ayahs, one might think that Allah is. Uh, really close to the good Muslims, to, to, to the people, good Muslims, or to the people who are patient. In Allah Ma'asabirin. It, it does not mean that. They don't hold these physical, or like, they don't hold these meanings which imply physical or created attributes to Allah. Be, be firm on that. Be firm on that. And be firm on the path of the Prophet, والسلام, he told us that that he left for us the Qur'an and he left for us the, the guidance of the Sunnah. But he did not tell us just open the book, open the Qur'an, open the Hadith and just read it and you'll be guided. He did not say that. The, the Qur'an is like water. The Qur'an, uh, I heard once an Indian scholar, he, he, he said that the Qur'an is like water in its benefit, very beneficial. But he said some people, some beasts, and very harmful animals, they drink water and, 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 they, and they continue to harm people. 
So, so the fact that a person is mentioning an ayah or a hadith to, to, to support uh, a wrong belief does not make him or her right. The, the, our, our religion, it, it's, it's, it's supported by the mental proofs and by the documental proofs. And we should be firm on that. We should be firm on that and we should understand that Allah is not located by time or place. And that Allah, the existence of Allah is not bound by time or place. This is the aqeedah of the Muslims. Walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Amen.